Turning to gun control now, Mayor Michael Bloomberg announcing a $12 million 13-state anti-gun advertising campaign, and the president about to get back on the road to, well, campaign for his vision of stricter gun control. All of this despite significant setbacks in the Senate. Joining us now, Eric Pratt. He's director of communications for Gun Owners of America. Paul Helmke, former president of the Brady Campaign, professor at Indiana University. Thank you both for being here. I, I, I want to start out with Wayne LaPierre, if I may, saying that the NRA supports a bill to get the records of those adjudicated mentally incompetent and dangerous into the background check system for gun dealers, better enforcement of federal laws, stronger penalties for illegal third-party purchases and gun trafficking. Uh, that is, I would think, uh, a, a fairly impressive list of things that the NRA supports. Paul, uh, can you uh, and the Brady campaign then join hands with the NRA on those issues? Those are all basically things that need to be done. Those are things that we've pushed for for years. Uh, I was happy after the Virginia Tech shootings to, to work with some of the NRA members to make sure that we uh, passed a bill then to get more records into the background check system. But with all those things, unless we require background checks on all sales, we're not going far enough. So yes, they're talking about some things that make sense. Yes, they've talked about things in the past. Wayne LaPierre supported universal background checks back in 1999. He's changed his mind apparently now. But we need to make sure we do a background check on nearly every sale if we're going to keep people that have felony records and are dangerously mentally Ill, Ill from getting guns. Uh, are those folks who are dangerously mentally ill in the system? Um, we still need to get a lot more records. And after Virginia Tech, we learned that there are only about 10 to 20 percent of the records in the system. Right. The Nix Improvement Act that was passed in December of 07, signed by President Bush in January of 08, uh, gave states uh, incentives to put more records in. There have been a lot more records put in since that time, but a lot of states still have a lot more to do. I know when Virginia Tech happened, my home state of Indiana had zero records. Now we're up to, uh, uh, you know, we, we've got more records in the system now, but there's still a long way to go. At the time of Virginia Tech, there were only four uh, records from uh, New York State. So that shows uh, that there's still a lot of work to be done. That needs to be done, and that needs to be one of the top priorities. But yep, unless yep, you're doing priority. a background check on every sale, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, Yet yeah, the priority, Eric, has been on uh, uh, assault weapons bans that constitute such a small fraction of the, the overall problem here. Uh, your thoughts on that of the Gun Owners Association? Well, you're right. It, it would cover just a minority of the, the murders. Uh, as you've noted before, uh, Lou, uh, there are more people die at the hands of clubs, hammers, and, and things like that than these so-called assault weapons, which really what they're after is banning common self-defense firearms. And, and we're very thankful. This last Saturday, there was a very key vote in the Senate. Senator Mike Lee offered an amendment to restrict the ability of the Senate to pass gun control, requiring uh, future gun control proposals to have a two-thirds vote. Now, his amendment failed because you need 60 votes to change the Senate rules, but he got 50 votes, a majority, and that's very significant. That says that right now there is a, a solid core group in the Senate that people does not be, want more gun control. Well, forgive me, people may be wondering how 50 votes in the Senate is a majority. Uh, one senator not vote. One senator not voting. The vote was 50 to 49. That's right. Uh, the mayor Mike Bloomberg has now got all of these front organizations now out that he's, he's spilling money into. Now launching a 12 million dollar campaign. Paul, uh, what is if there's such a groundswell of support? Why does everybody need Bloomberg's money and these front organizations that he's created, of which he is usually uh, the main man. Well, they really uh, it's, don't. It's, I, I don't believe you can call an organization that has over 900 elected mayors from around the country in it a front organization. It's a, it's a group what, of people what, what, that what uh, I was a mayor it? in Fort Wayne, Indiana, for years. It's a group that's uh, dealt with gun violence. But uh, it's in, you know when you get something like 95 percent of the American people supporting universal background checks, 85 percent of gun owners supporting it, 80 percent of NRA members supporting it. Yeah. Uh, but Congress having such reluctance to do this because they're afraid of the NRA, um, it shows that we really need to go to the people, that? and uh, I, I just that's, that's one of the Paul, things that you do with guy. the ad campaign. Do you really believe they're so afraid of the NRA, or do you really believe that they have? 
some conscience toward their constituents and want to represent the values and the desires of those constituents. I mean, are yes, you really writing been, uh, off all <laughs> those people in the Senate and the House of Representatives and saying they're nothing more than cowardly fools at the service of the NRA uh, rather than voting I've, their I've, conscience? I would, cert I would certainly not call them cowardly fools, but I've, I've been an elected official, I've run for office, I've been elected to office. And I know a lot of times, if it's not an issue that someone really knows the background of, really cares about, that a lot of times they look at the intensity of the opposition. And a, and a lot of electeds that I've talked to, they sense the intensity from the gun owners uh, who don't want any changes. And what? what we're trying to do is to make them realize that this doesn't hurt legitimate gun owners. This is something that makes that is common sense to require background checks on nearly all sales. We've required uh, federally licensed dealers to do this before. Well, even if folks don't break, even if folks don't follow the law, hopefully those who sell the guns would be following the law. Eric, you get the Luke? last word here very succinctly. I, I apologize. I know you've been uh, squeezed on time, but uh, that's okay. There Just we are. to com you know, Paul knows that background checks aren't stopping bad guys from getting guns. They can use fake IDs. And sadly, background checks stop a lot of otherwise law-abiding people, for, like 150,000 military veterans who've been put into the system because of their post-traumatic stress disorder, or women up in Delaware who've been, not, been denied because of their age and their gender, or people in, uh, in Oregon right. denied because of their uh, uh, political affiliation. That's the problem. Whenever you allow a government bureaucrat to tell a law-abiding citizen whether they can exercise a well, God-given right. Well, you're not saying right. we don't it's want background problem. checks. I am saying that. We don't, you don't want, want any background check. We don't want... No, no yeah. Lou. First of right. all, it, it's a God-given... Where in the Second Amendment, where it says the that right is, is the, the people to keep their arms... I've got to take our leave. We're going to leave not it. Be I said you're going to get the last word, but it's got to be a quick one. Okay? Well, the, it, the point is, is what what... what where is the room for infringements? We wouldn't tolerate okay, I, that with the First Aaron, Amendment. I, we wouldn't. I'm going to have blew. to leave you asking a question, and I appreciate you being here to provide the, <laughs> the few uh, answers to the few questions that I could uh, uh, get your way. Eric, thanks a lot. Eric Pratt, Paul Helmke, thank you very much.